Welcome back. Monday, September 15th was one of those Black Mondays, a day when a banking crisis triggered huge losses on American and world markets. Lost in that story was the news that U.S. newspaper companies saw their share values drop more in relative terms than the rest of the market. American newspapers were in trouble long before the banks were. 2008 has seen huge job losses as papers saw their lifeblood, advertising revenue, either migrate to the Internet or dry up altogether. How did it happen? The Listening Post goes to California, home of one of America's oldest and best-known titles, the San Francisco Chronicle, to find out if 2008 will be the year the U.S. newspaper industry publishes its own obituary. So it's kind of the best of time and, and the worst of times, to quote uh, uh, Dickens. How many people do you see in America walking around with a newspaper uh, these days below a certain age, below the age of 30? You don't see too many. The U.S. newspaper is in trouble. That may not sound like breaking news, but 2008 has seen a decline turn into a free fall. The obvious cause? Everybody's talking about the economy. It's now weighing heavily on the minds of millions of Americans. I read the news today. Oh, boy. Uh, here we go, the Financial Times, bad news. You look at the USA Today, signs of a growing crisis. Mm -hmm. Everything's going in the wrong direction. You know, I hate being the one who has to tell you this, but it's the truth. We as a nation are headed for an economic disaster. What is kind of a perfect storm. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the whole uh, nation is uh, struggling under a bad economy, and that's had a dramatic impact on the printed side of the newspaper industry um, at a time when it was in a massive amount of change anyway. What has happened this year and really contributed to the drop-off is that we have had this uh, subprime mortgage crisis contribute to uh, plummeting housing values. We've seen other kinds of macroeconomic problems trickle down into people's daily lives. The fact is newspaper stocks, if you use that as a measure of the, of the newspaper industry's performance, have just absolutely tanked this year. According to the Newspaper Association of America, advertising revenue, which accounts for roughly 80% of a typical paper's income, fell by $3 billion to $18.8 billion for the first six months of 2008, the worst figures in a dozen years. We're seeing drops in ad revenue of 15%, 17%, sometimes 20%, and then classified revenues, which are how U.S. newspaper publishers have made much of their money throughout the year. Those classified revenues are off sometimes by as 25% uh, or more. Primarily, particularly in this market, it is new websites like Craigslist.com, which have uh, basically taken our huge revenue source, classified advertising away, and that's happening across the United States, many other uh, metro newspapers, and it's been very painful. But this is a twofold crisis. Not only advertising revenue, but readership is also shrinking. Since 1984, the total annual circulation of daily papers has fallen by over 10 million copies, and newspapers across the country are performing something of a disappearing act. Since 1973, the number of titles has dropped by a fifth. Where are the readers and the journalists going? One answer is online. Newspapers are seeing the online medium as both a threat and an opportunity. Obviously, there is competition. There's a 24-hour news cycle now. But you see many newspapers uh, having a big presence online. Barack Obama showed great leadership. Newspapers can and are making money online, including this one. The big question is whether they can come to the point where they make enough money online to support the large newsrooms uh, on the print side. And newspapers face competition from dedicated online news sources offering interactive multimedia content. Um, I believe that people are turning to the net for their news because of the immediacy of the information. What TV and radio haven't done, the internet is going to do to kill off newspapers as we've, as we've known them as a printed medium. Some are struggling to find their feet in cyberspace. A recently leaked memo from the managing editor of the Philadelphia Inquirer announced the paper would delay putting some news on its website to save for the morning print edition seen by many as a backward step. 
Uh, I used to work at the Washington Post's website as a reporter online there. This collision between a community and I was and working there at a time when the Angeles prevailing Angeles wisdom Angeles was Angeles changing to we should not hold up breaking news for the next day's paper in order to give it the boost in the paper first. We have to consider the reader first and the reader wants breaking news when it's most important. People have been predicting the death of the printed newspaper for decades, but now it seems you can't even give them away. We are an industry in transition. Um, ultimately, it will shake out, but for the next few years, I believe, we are going to be really experiencing change. This is not a death rattle. This is a contraction. A, a city like San Francisco without a newspaper would be just unimaginable. It would be uh, uh, just one of the biggest losses, I think, that could happen, and that would be true of any city in America that would lose uh, its paper. But many readers have already forsaken the newspaper and look exclusively online for news the way they want it. In many ways, what we're doing is we're going back to the way that American journalism was at the time of our revolution and the time of the First Amendment being adopted. And that is, uh, you used to have individuals that owned printing presses, and they put out their broadsides, and you had many different ones, and they were very often very partisan. So as the conventional and corporate newspapers feel the squeeze, different media are expanding to take their place. But perhaps the survival of the traditional newspaper has a deeper significance. We're really trying to figure out what, what's going to be the right model and how do we sustain a very important part of American journalism and I think in a very important part of democracy in our country. As the newspapers print ever more dire economic news on their front pages, finding that new economic model for their own industry will get even harder. More Global Village Voices now on the U.S. newspaper industry. You know, what I actually believe the newspapers are on the decline is usually because of the high price of oil, which means that the newspapers are starting to raise their prices. I usually look for the general news stories, the politics section, and the sports. But seeing that I can get it from the Internet, it's more easier for me to just go on the Internet. A lot of the newspapers are declining for that reason because they're not being very selective in how they're covering the news. And usually you got to get both sides of the opinion. But the internet usually is the best thing for me to get my information because information just goes out in a faster pace than what the newspapers deliver on your news, well, on your doorstep every morning. Finally, back to North Korea. And if there's one thing we know about the media, it's that when denied access to a story, they tend to make stuff up. A satirical German TV show called Extra 3 has created an animation that takes Kim Jong-il and turns him into a North Korean version of Super Mario. The video has taken more than a million hits on YouTube. No word on how many of the people clicking on it are in North Korea. Super Kim, with its German narration and English subtitles, is our Internet Video of the Week. We'll see you next time at the Listening Post. Spiel Super Kim! Du steuerst den kleinen Super Kim durch seine wundersame Welt, Super Nordkorea. Mmm, teurer importierter Cognac. Na, jetzt kann's losgehen. Nanu, hungernde Kinder. Zeit für deinen Special Move. Ignorieren und weitermachen. Sie lieben dich. Oh nein. Ein sechs mächte gespräch Vorsicht, die wollen mit dir verhandeln. Ignorieren und weitermachen. Nachdem du an denen vorbei bist, hol dir deinen Mega-Bonus. Jetzt bist du Super Atom Kim. Jetzt hast du es fast geschafft. Aber hey, wer die Bombe hat, muss sich vor keinem mehr fürchten. Das spricht sich schnell rum. Deshalb gibt's jetzt den Multiplayer-Modus. Mit dem Iran, dem Sudan und vielen verrückten Terroristen. Alle haben jetzt die Bombe. Und wenn einer mal keine hat, kannst du sicher mit ihm tauschen. Hm, Cognac.